Hi, this is Travis in the Uncanny Valley. I take things literally. So what that means for me is I see that at play in six different areas of my life. So this is version whatever of trying to get this out so that I can process it and make a better mental image of this. So it's a work in progress, but I take things literally, which um, affects how I I'll start with my vocabulary. So I take things literally because that assists my logic brain as opposed to uh, one who might have an emotional brain or a more balanced approach between those two. So my vocabulary is very much, um, it's important. It's something I rely on because if a word has a meaning, um, that's not going to go away. You know, it might gain another meaning over time, but like it still retains that initial definition. So a vocabulary is something that's built over a lifetime um, that I draw upon whenever I'm saying anything. I'm f constantly flipping through a vocabulary for the best way to articulate what is usually a very fine point. Usually such a fine point that it's not just one that's lost on the listener, but they couldn't care less typically. Uh, so the whole effort is often a waste. Um, so having that fine vocabulary uh, helps in my rules-based approach that is the way that I process all of the human interactions that I observe. Um, yeah, that affects not how I use sarcasm because I can use sarcasm very well because whether something is used literally or it's used sarcastically, um, you're just typically using the opposite of what you're saying. So it still um, has a literal meaning, even if you're suggesting the opposite through sarcasm. So vocabulary, rules-based system, sarcasm. Um, yeah, that helps because also... Um, I have some issues around loss of control. So uh, when you are in such a rigid system uh, that is operating in a world that you don't know while you're growing up is not a rules-based system, you don't know what the typical mind is thinking and how it's functioning, um, the loss of control is ever present because you, you don't even know the systems at play. So if you're able to uh, take all of the observed data and process it in a literal fashion, you can archive it in a systematic approach, a an approach that, mind you, you don't know other people are not using. So you're misfiling a lot of data, I'm learning. So when you take someone at their word and you take someone at face value uh, and there was a more nuanced thing meant by it or there was a social aspect to what they were saying or why they were saying it, um, as a highly sensitive person, I picked up, it's very likely I picked up on the, ner <laughs> the verbal and nonverbal things at play in the room when it was said. But that's just to say I... I saw them in real time. That's not to say uh, or suggest that I knew how they were being used or what they meant. So I don't have a way to catalog that observed interaction correctly, correctly meaning the way it was intended or the way it was very likely received by the other typical people in the room. Um, whew, 
Yeah. So it's a futile effort to use this to help um, avoid the loss of control issue. I have mind blindness and that that's a factor. So hmm. yeah, so my mind blindness uh, means that I, I'm very limited in, in knowing all the other ways that all the other people in a situation um, are meaning what they say and receiving what others say. Uh, so when I say something in a literal logic, uh, from a literal and logic uh, standpoint, uh, speaking with the same vocabulary and whatever, I'm making jokes in a totally different direction and it has a totally different um, trajectory other than the other things that other people are saying. And uh, I don't know how to have those interactions in a normative way. Another way that this has uh, been at play is through rhetorical questions. So there's been many times that uh, I remember growing up, I remember in the third grade, the teacher gave some small punishment, so small consequence to a student who was doing something. I don't recall what, but based on the setup of the school, she had him walk the halls, uh, make three laps around the hall. And when uh, he came back uh, with what was to him, I'm thinking now, just realizing now, was probably some level of uh, consequence of social something. You know, I don't know what that would have been to an eight-year-old uh, of having been called out and made to have a consequence, you know, put in his place in some way. I really liked this teacher. I, I really like her. Uh, you know, I enjoyed having her. But um, anyways, when he got back to class, uh, she kind of, you know, said something to the effect of whether he'd learned his lesson and uh, he obliged with uh, the appropriate answer, I'm sure. And then um, I don't know what exactly was happening in the class, but just if anyone else would want to walk the hall because maybe she heard some chit, you know, some chatter that she didn't like. And uh, she liked me and I liked her. And, and But without thinking, my brain said, something's off here. Um, if this is a consequence, why is it being volunteered uh, to the class that you can just... So I, I raised my hand and said, sure, happy as can be, perked up took the consequence uh, for no logical reason, uh, puzzled, trying to figure out how is this a consequence that I can volunteer myself for? Um, I Realizing partly that I'm disarming uh, this as a consequence by actually not knowing any better and just volunteering for it. But uh, yeah, there's a, <laughs> there's a level of mind blindness there that I, I feel like I was exploring and... Uh, and, you know, loss of control because the structure of, you know, having a teacher with authority and consequences are given out fairly and all that stuff. I felt there was some level of loss of control there, too, because who who asks a classroom of kids if they want a consequence when they're they're just sitting there, uh, presumably minding their own business? Um, so I I needed to dissect that by volunteering. But it was just a rhetorical question. I didn't understand how this was supposed to be received. And that happened, something like that happened uh, in the seventh grade where I answered a rhetorical question and got in trouble. And in, you know, as a sophomore, uh, I, another interaction with the substitute science teacher um, answered what I later found out was a rhetorical question. Um, had a health teacher who uh, we had 
we had an interesting exchange and um i ended up in the principal's office over that um but yeah so i think i touched on all the things sarcasm loss of control rhetorical questions vocabulary rules based mind blindness but taking things literally has just been like the way that my brain works. So I, I'm interested to see what else I, I see is is tied in to my literal brain, um, you know, my personal little, literal brain. As a highly sensitive person, I, I feel like I'm I'm receiving all this other data and it's it's often overwhelming. And it's just that I don't know what to do with it because it's not, um, it's not facts, you know, it's not, it's not logic. It's not truths. It's just wishy-washy verbal and nonverbal things that, that are, are non-factual. So it's, uh, it's overwhelming and, and I have no way to categorize it. So yeah, this is, uh, interesting journey for me.